Good morning, everybody. It is a pleasure for me to be here today to welcome you on our conference and to speak on this first session on ratification, implementation and cooperation issues. These are issues that I'm very passionate about, having spent the past 10 years of my life working on implementation. In my presentation today, I'm going to address the obstacles, the challenges and solutions um, that we have identified in dealing with these issues as part of our ICJ Toolkits project. I will also talk briefly about one of our target countries, and that is Indonesia, uh, following our recent work there, and the key outputs we are currently finalizing, which is the Cooperation and Judicial Assistance Database, which is developed by my home institution, the Human Rights Law Center at Nottingham, formerly member of the EU, um, as well as the uh, general guidelines uh, on implementation. Now, let me start by giving you uh, some facts and figures to put our work in context. 14 years, as Kirsten kindly suggested, um, after the entering into force of the Rome Statute of, for the International Criminal Court, the court counts 124 um, state parties amongst its members. With 70 countries yet to join the court, the need to continue the support efforts to enhance the ratification uh, prospects by more states um, is ever-present. With 65% of the world's population remaining outside the court's reach, it is clear to me that ratification efforts ought to continue. Moving to implementation, out of the 124 state parties, only 53% of them, that is 66 out of 124, have legislation implementing the core international crimes as defined in the statute. And around 47 of them, 47% of them, that is approximately 58 states, have legislation regulating cooperation with the ICC. The uptake of implementation varies across regions. For example, the highest numbers of implementing legislation can be found amongst the Western European and other states group, followed by the Eastern European states. The engagement of Asia-Pacific with the Rome Statute uh, remains low, while states that belong to the African and the Latin American groups uh, and Caribbean groups also have a long way to go towards implementing the Rome Statute fully as I'm sure my colleagues taking the floor after me will tell us. Cooperation is also a frontline issue for the ICC. Cooperation has a direct impact on the ability of the ICC to effectively fulfill its mandate. As the court does not have its own police force, um, it entirely depends on state cooperation. Within this project, we have sought to cover an area of cooperation that is relatively unexplored. Namely, the need to have easy access to implementing legislation covering cooperation, which can then be used by other states to increase their capacity and better cooperate with the court. The examples of al-Bashir traveling to South Africa or the refusal of Kenya to provide evidence to the prosecutor. The recent Libya cases um, are only a couple of instances where ICC cooperation hit the frontline news and served as a reminder of the importance of strengthening uh, cooperation. Against this backdrop and as part of the ICJ Toolkits project, the Case Matrix Network and its partners have developed the Ratification, Implementation and Cooperation Toolkit. Now, through a combination of databases, uh, publications and policy documents, uh, the Ratification, Implementation and Cooperation Toolkit aims to provide national legislators, state institutions, independent institutions, NGOs, academics with the tools resources and services to support efforts to ratify and implement the Rome Statute and better cooperate with the ICC. I shall now tell brief, turn briefly to ratification. Now, the decision or not, as the case may be, to ratify the Rome Statute may stumble upon a number of obstacles, such as a state's constitution with regard to immunities, 
extradition of our nationals, or sentencing schemes. It may also be affected by factors such as the geographical or geopolitical position of the state, um, the relations in the region, the very structure of a treaty, such as the Rome Statute. These are all factors that influence a state's decision to accede to or ratify a treaty, a process that is both challenging and time-consuming. It may be that ratification is primarily a political decision. However, through our work, we believe that we can remove obstacles to ratification by understanding the local concerns, engaging in a dialogue, clearing up misconceptions, clarifying the statute provisions, and also through providing comparative examples from other jurisdictions. Let's face it, states have generally been through the same issues before. So showing other states how their peers have tackled similar concerns um, can help move the discussion forward. One of our target countries as part of this project has been Indonesia. Now, Indonesia is a country that has suffered mass atrocity in the not so distant past. However, Indonesia is still not a state party to the ICC. It may be that uh, Rome Statute ratification is not imminent. However, reforming the criminal code has been a priority for, the re for recent governments in Indonesia, with two drafts being published during 2015. CMN has been actively involved in this reform process. In March 2016, we co-convened a high-level focus group with leading Indonesian criminal justice reformers, reviewing the status of the draft criminal code and considering the proposed provisions on the crime of genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes, as well as defenses, liabilities laid down in the June 2015 draft. The focus group took place in advance of the review of the general principles section of the draft criminal code, which was led by the government's working group committee on criminal code. It was followed by a formal request for consultations um, on various aspects of command responsibility and superior orders, which we delivered successfully, directly feeding into the drafting process. We have since, since provided additional cl clarifications as the latest draft is currently being discussed. So CMN has been actively engaged with local partners in Indonesia, consulting on issues of adherence of the proposed legislation with international standards and providing comparative examples, comparative research for the formulation of provisions within the new criminal code. Continuing with our engagement, we have a number of forthcoming um, uh, proposals, del deliverables uh, to, to mention. We're currently working on an annotated version of the draft criminal code of Indonesia um, on crimes and individual criminal responsibility. We're also working on a set of specific recommendations to the government um, with regard to the legal reform process. A set of guidelines providing analysis of the legal requirements pertaining to incorporation into Indonesian law of the core international crimes and modes of liability. And fourthly, an OPED uh, on the challenges faced by the Indonesian legal reform process. Now, having examined ratification, I shall now move to discuss implementation. If ratification is the first step in the fight against impunity for core international crimes, then implementation is surely the second. For states to be able to investigate and prosecute core international crimes um, and to cooperate with the ICC and other international tribunals, they need to incorporate elements of the ICC statute into their respective legal systems. This need is twofold. First and foremost is a practical one. For a successful and effective cooperation between states and the court, states must have the necessary legislation in place. The wording of Article 88 of the statute is clear. The second reason to pursue consistent and comprehensive implementation of the Rome Statute on the national level 
is to enable states to exercise primary jurisdiction over the crimes listed in the statute, thus giving meaning to complementarity. Therefore, although there is no explicit obligation uh, to implement the substantive part of the statute, states are encouraged to do so in order to be able to pursue national prosecutions of core international crimes and keep the ICC at bay. Implementation takes time. Drafting and passing implementing legislation on international criminal law issues um, and procedures is not an easy task. It's a complex and protracted process. Not only does it require solid understanding of the national legal framework and criminal justice system, but also expert knowledge of international criminal law um, and resources, which in many cases states lack. Moreover, assessing the compatibility of national provisions with international instruments is a difficult task. The Rome Statute is the product of lengthy negotiations and numerous compromises. It is a highly complex international criminal law document pushing the boundaries of many national criminal legislations. When it comes, for example, to sexual violence or when it comes to the detailed definition of crimes and fair trial guarantees enshrined in the statute. Furthermore, the statute may conflict with constitutional guarantees. Issues regarding immunities, it's very common for states to object to that. Protection of our na own nationals, the death penalty and life imprisonment, amnesties and the statutes of limitations may need to be revisited in the implementation process. The legal system followed by a state, um, i.e. whether it is a monist or dualist, also affects implementation, as the, the position international law occupies within differs, and so do the steps that need to be taken regarding implementation. Although some provisions of the Rome Statute are very specific, such as the crimes, um, others, such as those pertaining to cooperation, require other steps. They require enactment of specific provisions to give meaning to the obligations. Finally, implementation trends across the, wo across the world indicate that implementation is uh, a challenging process, particularly in under-resourced jurisdictions in states of conflict or post-conflict transition. Such states um, face additional obstacles, uh, including the shortage of qualified actors within the criminal justice system, destroyed material and institutional infrastructure, lack of political will and access to resources. Furthermore, the sheer number of crimes that typically occur in contemporary armed conflicts and which can potentially come within the jurisdiction of the ICC, increase the challenges for uh, the already overburdened, underfunded and under-resourced criminal justice systems. In order to overcome some of the above obstacles, the ICJ Toolkits project seeks to increase uh, the national capacity of states to address core international crimes by providing free access to legal information, legal expertise and knowledge tools. In the field of implementing legislation, uh, CMN has entered into a partnership with the Human Rights Law Centre at Nottingham, which has a decade-long uh, experience in the field of implementing legislation and has been an outsourcing partner of the ICC. You may be familiar with the National Implementing Legislation um, database, which uh, has been developed by Nottingham uh, as an online uh, knowledge um, transfer platform and which forms part of the Legal Tools project. So at the request of the Working Group of Cooperation and as part of the ICJ Toolkits project, HRLC has developed a new database, the Cooperation and Judicial Assistance database, uh, which contains uh, access to cooperation legislation from all the state parties. Now, CJUT will function as an add-on to uh, the uh, to NILD and uh, essentially 
we hope that this will be the central information hub on all aspects of cooperation legislation. It currently has 120 cooperation laws. Um, we have uh, come up with 200 purposely designed keywords, so information can be filtered um, at a paragraph, paragraph level in order to guide the national actors when drafting legislation. It is our firm belief that only through democratic and universal access to legal information can national uh, criminal justice systems and actors familiarize themselves with international standards and hopefully strengthen the efforts to fight against impunity. Now, CJED's key contribution is to provide up-to-the-minute data on how uh, other users uh, have used the, this legislation, and so you have an, an upshot of implementing legislation pertaining to cooperation for users to tailor to their purposes. CJET is getting its final touches over the summer, and we will be releasing it uh, to the world uh, in the November ASP. So something to look forward to. The final output um, in terms of, um, of our toolkit project is this general guidelines on implementing the Rome Statute. Through working with numerous states and wishing to enact implementing legislation in as many states as possible, and through uh, building on our experience and expertise from Indonesia, as well as the work we have yet to do in Sierra Leone, we have come to the conclusion that a set of guidelines tackling each of the implementation issues on both substantive uh, and procedural cooperation law would be a useful tool. The guidelines cover the need uh, for implementing the Rome Statute. They explore the challenges, the obstacles that states face in the process, and offer examples from different approaches of implementation through national provisions. So we hope to showcase various states' parties' legislation, with examples generated from NILD and CJUD, to draw comparisons between national legislation and the various states. We need to highlight similarities, differences, and showcase also unique approaches to implementation. They, uh, so areas in which states have gone beyond the Rome Statute, but also uh, areas where states have fallen short of them. So no naming and shaming there, but it will be obvious uh, what the process will be. It is our ambition to create a comprehensive output uh, on implementation of the Rome Statute at the national level, equipping national legislators and other criminal justice actors with a solid understanding of the process, options, and existing approaches, and a unique point of reference uh, to guide their work. To conclude, I would argue that we are now at an exciting crossroads. Whilst ratification of the statute remains an issue, implementation and cooperation take prominence. As I have long argued in my work, the future of international criminal justice is reliant upon building capacity at the national level. It is our aspiration that the ratification, implementation and cooperation toolkit with a database and publication it encompasses serves this purpose exceedingly well, especially in assisting less well-resourced jurisdiction. As part of this project, the CMN and its partners, HRLC and ICLHR initiative, have achieved a lot already. As we are heading towards the completion of our work, there are many exciting developments yet to come. All that remains for me to do is thank you for your attention and invite you to contribute to the discussion. Thanks. <laughs>